in this video. I'm gonna eat bizarre French food for 24 hours. Oh, you made a mistake. <laughs> So of course the menu today won't be bizarre to people from Paris or people from France, but I'm looking for food that you won't find in my hometown. For example, frog legs, snails. Today, I'm gonna dig as deep as I can. There's a lot more than frog legs and snails. Follow me, let's take this ride together and find some weird food here in Paris. We've come to our first restaurant, our first destination for today, Le Escargo. I think that's how you say it. You've probably, maybe you've heard about it in rap songs. Escargo, my cargo, Biggie, anybody? Biggie Smalls? Escargo is French for snails. Either their address is 1832 or this place has been open for a real long time. It's a very well-known establishment that has a huge wide range of food from typical French classics to foods like snails and even pancreas. First meal right here, we have two dishes. This is a tartare or in French, tata roughly speaking. This is a special gland from a calf. I'm gonna talk about that in a moment, but first, this is a beautiful presentation for tartare. I was told earlier that actually tartare in France used to be really popular to make with horse meat. Here, they don't have horse. You better believe when I found that out, I asked, hey, do we have a horse option? They said, uh, no. This is beef, French fries on the side. Can I tell you something? Here in France, they don't even say the French part, just fries. Take a look at this. You can tell it's like hand chopped and not just ground meat. Oh, I got a nice big bite. Some raw beef for breakfast, let's go. Oui, oui. It's so good. It's very light, aromatic. It's interesting because it's just, it's like sticky, cold, heavy, but the flavors couldn't be more light, really gentle. I love the feel, I love the taste, and especially when you put it on some bread. Ooh, chef's kiss. Very nice. That is our first course. Right here is the sweet bread. It's a mix of a few different things. There's a bread here, there's potato, and then this is a sweet bread, which is not a bread at all. This is actually a gland. What gland? Well, let me tell you. This is the thymus of a calf. Well, where's the thymus? It's like right here, basically. It's a small gland that's part of your lymphatic system. That sounds delicious. I've never had this. Your lymphatic system is part of your immune system. And there's one thing this immune system could not fight off, and that's why it's here on my plate right now. Anybody would have the patience or thought to remove this part from the animal and cook it up to make it look like a five-star meal. Look at this. It has a bold, smoky, almost slightly bitter flavor. It's super soft. It's nothing like I've had before. I would compare it mostly to something between a brain and a liver. That's weird. I mean, I like it. It's weird in the best way possible. There's so much of it. Look how big this is. They do not shortchange their guests on the thymus. I mean, if you come here, you're hungry for this. You might have to split it with a friend. There's so much. The best part about this very strange food is they brought me a white wine that they said actually pairs with this sweet bread. Mmm. Yeah. Last thing I want to say about this, sweet bread. I love the term sweet bread because it is so uh, euphemistic. The only way to get people to eat something like this is to be like, uh, it's bread. It's basically bread. What are you talking about? Well, that doesn't look like bread. What kind of bread is it? Sweet bread. Just eat it. So this is just our first course at this restaurant. At this point, they're going to let me go into the kitchen and see how they make a few of their other very special, unique foods. This is our chef for today. She's gonna to be preparing the frog legs. Step one, the frog legs are put in some flour. After the oil is heated up here in the skillet, it just goes directly on there. A little bit of salt, giving them a little bit of a flip. More oil, yes. How do you say butter in French? Yeah. Butter in French, yeah. Next is a combination right here of parsley and garlic. The frog legs are gonna come out of the hot pan and into a cast iron skillet. And all that butter is gonna go right on top. Oh yes, finish. That was our first food that we get to see in the kitchen. The second one is snail. So at this point, the shells are completely empty. Step one is to put the snail meat back inside its shell. All the meat has actually been cooked already in a broth, and so it's actually not going back into its original home. It's going into somebody else's shell. Now it's all about the flavor. This is a butter she's putting inside. It's a green butter infused with garlic and parsley. These look fantastic. Next step, we're gonna put that in the oven and come back in just a little bit. Say goodbye. The moment has come. The moment has not come. And that is ready. The butter is kind of oozing out of some of these. I can smell the garlic right now. It looks fantastic. I cannot wait to try this out. So we just came from the kitchen right here. We have the frog legs and the snails. The smells here are incredible. Right here, we have the frog legs. It's okay just to eat these with your hands, just like you're eating a piece of chicken. This frog is incredibly flexible and must have been a gymnast. You can see, I love how they cook it at such a hot temperature and so much oil that it just crisps out the skin on the outside. 
That is so delicious. There's nothing not to like about that. It tastes buttery. You taste the parsley, the garlic, until you actually try it. It does sound a little bit strange. People in France eat frog legs. But I think 90% of the people watching right now, if they saw this in front of them, would not hesitate to try it. Just the smells alone lure you in. It smells so good. I wish you could replace wing night in the US with frog leg night, because I could totally go for this. Five frogs, but only front legs. Front legs. Front legs. If you go to Cambodia, Thailand, Vietnam, they're going to have all the meat. Actually, they eat the skin too. I love what they're doing here, but I think uh, I want the rest of the frog. You know, I'm paying for five frogs, five souls. Where'd the rest of the frog go? This brings us to our final course here at this restaurant, the Escargot. The snails, fresh out of the oven. What's amazing is they have snail drawers. Inside, you can see that they have many different flavors of butter. So the butter has been infused with other ingredients, other flavors. This one though, I think it's a great choice. Now, the thing is when you eat snails here, it's uh, very different than in Vietnam because they have a whole tool made just for picking up the snail. Oh, there you go. That snail ain't going anywhere. With the snail secure, we take our little fork and we dig for that piece of meat somewhere deep inside there. Butter, parsley, garlic, and then a big, dark, brown, gooey, slimy snail. Let's try it out. Oh, slightly chewy, but slightly soft too. They pair this with bread. Now the toasted bread is cut thin because it's meant to be stuck inside of the snail. I gotta say, I thought the snail holder was overkill. It is very effective. The funniest part to me is that they just boil random snails and put them in random shells. I'm a big snail fan. Ever since moving to Vietnam, I've had dozens of different types of snails with different preparations. I love that and I love this too. Though I gotta say here in France, snails are much more expensive than in Vietnam. This is lunch. Soon, we're gonna head to dinner at our next location. It's gotta be against the law to look this damn good. So we've had lunch already. I've been walking around all day. I built up an appetite and now we are here for dinner. A restaurant obviously called Alpi de Cachon. Probably. This restaurant is 70 years old. Here you're gonna find a lot of classic French food and not just little bites either. They have some seriously big, heavy food here. I'm gonna step into the kitchen immediately to see how they whip up one of their most unique dishes. Let's go. Right now, I'm in the kitchen with Christophe Lemire. Here we have calf liver. It looks gorgeous, it looks slippery. I've never had calf liver. I'm not sure the reason for it. Maybe it's more tender, maybe it's more innocent tasting. We're gonna see how they prepare it here in just a moment. Let's do this. He takes the liver, he's gonna dredge that in a little bit of flour. The butter goes into a hot skillet. Dredge the liver once more, beat off some of that flour, and then boom. Nice and easy, right into that butter. The sound is incredible. He starts basting it, he's putting the butter over the top, cooking it from both sides. The smells in here are incredible. It's rich, it's buttery. Next, some garlic and a bay leaf go inside. He gives it a little bit of a flip, and my gosh, that is looking incredible. I've never seen a liver cook this way where it has almost a crust on the outside. Here he's scooping out a veal demi-glaze. Look at that thick, beautiful glaze. Gently moves the liver over to the plate. First he puts on lemon, capers, parsley, and croutons. Chef, merci. It looks incredible. My first time having calf liver. Let's go. Well, bonjour. Welcome to our first course. Right here, we've got the calf liver. Come take a look at this. The final preparation. I gotta say, with the French, you gotta give it up to them when it comes to the presentation. It is so soft and bouncy, you can tell it's definitely not cooked all the way through. This is not well done. That is certainly intentional. Let's cut it and see how red it is inside. Oh, wow. You can really feel like the tissues break apart as you cut it. It is not like a piece of Wagyu or something like that. So it's not like it necessarily looks, you know, super pink inside. I'm gonna scoop up some of that glaze. Let's try it out. All right, first taste. What do you call this in French? Foie de veau. My first taste of foie de veau here in France. Let's go. That is a very bold flavor. The glaze around it is sticky, it's wonderful. It has a salty, savory beef flavor to it, but the liver itself is so intense. It's almost like a little bit gamey too. Very strong taste. And the texture too, almost like it's spongy when you're biting through it, not dry at all. It's funny because I said, I would like a white wine to go with it. And they said, mm, that's not gonna be strong enough. How about this? Ah, bold flavor to go with other bold flavors. That's intense. This is one cup of potatoes. Let's try that. Oh, that's nice. Much better than KFC. Sorry, that was my white trash comparison of the day. There are a couple other things on this menu that I have to try out before leaving Paris. Course number two. This is uh, a pork trotter. You can see where the, the hoof splits. And then the skin right here, it's not crispy. It's a little bit more soft when you touch it. It's not like a Filipino crispy pata. It's more like you know, a, a French. 
It's more like a French pork trotter. Where do we even begin with a masterpiece like this? You can see it reveals the bones inside. My guess is that they probably grill it and then they put it in the oven to finish it off. And that is what's making this skin right here so gummy. Let's try it out. It's like a pork flavored gummy bear. Unbelievably rich, but super sticky, just sticking to the inside of your mouth as you eat it. It's a really clean, but heavy flavor. And then on the side, how do you say that? Bearnaise. Bearnaise. How do you say sauce? Sauce. Bearnaise sauce. I want to try giving this a little bit of a dip in the bearnaise sauce and see what that does. the best bite so far. And that sauce is everything. The sauce has a beautiful, slightly sour element. It just makes everything taste a little bit lighter. This is like Garfunkel, uh, but this is Simon. You need Simon. Actually, Simon's fine on his own too. Turns out he didn't really need Garfunkel, but together, still, they make beautiful music. Are the young people still paying attention? Do you know who I'm talking about? Oh, final course. Here, this is kind of similar to what we had already. Can you look at that and distinguish what that is? Give you a hint, it's part of a pig. The, the you know, this part. It's the snout. I'm gonna try to use my fork this time. Wow, that is just like pure fat. This is one of the most rich dishes I've ever had in my life. It's so soft, it's been cooked so long, the meat and the fat just peel right off. Considering this is almost like eating pure butter. There we go, that is pork butter. What I've learned from the last dish is that this is so much better with beignet sauce. How was that? He's going, yeah, that's great. A delicious snout, like skin, and just pure fat. But when you mix it with that sauce, it's very lovely. Ah, so there's a patron saint of butchers. I bet you didn't know that. His name is Saint Antoine, and this dish is called the Temptation of Saint Antoine. And it's all the stuff that will make him be tempted. Take a look at that. That is a big old chunk of pig ear, but it's mostly just cartilage and skin. Let's give it a little bit of a dip. Oh yes, it's like Doritos, but better. Oh, it's delicious. The ear itself is already beautifully seasoned. The skin around the outside is a bit gummy, chewing, and then you have that nice, snappy, crunchy cartilage on the inside. It's been boiled the perfect amount of time. You wouldn't want it any harder or any softer. That is awesome. That is probably one of the best pig ears I've ever had in my life. For most people, that, that wouldn't be that many ears. But for me, that's like, uh, I don't 10 years probably. Our final mystery meat to end our day of bizarre eating here in Paris. This is the tail. What they've done is they've taken off some of the skin, but they've left this right here towards the end. There's some muscle here. I don't even want to dip this. This looks incredible on its own. Oh, it's good. It's like they have this delicious seasoned flour, some crumbs on the outside. It's savory, it's bold. With similar flavors to the other body parts, but just a different texture. And that's what's fun about eating something like this, is a lot of it's gonna taste similar, but each body part's gonna have a little bit different texture. Some are gonna be chewy, some are just gonna be completely gooey and fatty, and some like the ear are kind of snappy. So this wraps up our dinner portion of the day. We've had lunch, we've had dinner, we've been eating these bizarre French foods for 24 hours. It's time to conclude the day. Guys, that is the end of our video. For me, the most uh, intimidating food was the, the liver of the calf. So bold. How can you be so young, but so bold? Ugh. Before we go, I want to say a huge thank you to Secret Food Tours for making this video possible. They went around and did a lot of the research for us so we could make this video happen. Secret Food Tours at secretfoodtours.com. They do food tours here in Paris. If you come to Paris, if you have limited time, or if you just want to make the most out of your time, I highly suggest doing a food tour and seeing the best of what Paris has to offer. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. <gasps> Peace. All right, I think there's still, there's gotta be more unique stuff. Maybe an endangered bird or a pigeon. I keep seeing so many pigeons. I can eat a pigeon. No, I think I'll just uh, get drunk instead. Welcome to the Best Ever Merch Store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best Ever Bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes Hoodie. Pillow Soft Fabric with a quality custom graphic inlay. And our Street Food Around the World Graphic Tee. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A peace.